When I was planning my 30k Night Lords army, I intended on them being situated in a dark urban war zone where their terror tactics would be put to best use. In this video, I'm going to show you how I went about creating urban war zone bases that you can replicate in your own army. I needed a way that I could create 32mm bases and larger but still keep them uniform. A problem that I see with bases is that it works well at one size, but as soon as it goes any larger, everyone's just got their foot on a rock. This theme needs to be adjustable to whatever size base I wanted. Here's what I came up with. We're starting with an oval wooden base. I know people may scoff at a wooden base, but one, they're cheaper, and two, once we finish with this process, you're really not going to notice. To start, we need to change the texture of the wooden base to be more interesting. I found these A4 sheets of textured plastic card from Green Stuff World, and they're just what I need. They have multiple styles to choose from, so if the rock wall one I'm using isn't your style, then there's a few others to choose from. Side note, I'm pretty sure these can be found cheaper somewhere else, but I'm having trouble locating where they are on the internet, so if anyone knows where you can get these cheaper, put it in the comments below. Now, one of these sheets will go further than you think. We're now about to use some scissors. Thank you. To massacre this sheet of plastic. Start cutting random shapes out of the plastic sheet. There's no right or wrong way to do this, just vary the sizes so you have something to work with later. We're going to use our old friend super glue here. I buy these larger industrial size pots as they work out a bit cheaper, but any super glue will do. Apply some glue to the plastic card and then apply it to the base. If you're using the rock wall plastic card, like in this tutorial, keep an eye out for how the stones are laid out when placing the plastic card down. It can look a bit disjointed if the direction of the stone suddenly shifts to a completely different angle. It's wise to have some activator on standby with this build. Waiting around for glue to dry will just slow you down, potentially cause issues if the glue hasn't cured. Then just start applying more of your cutoffs to the base. Don't worry if they're gaps, we'll sort this out later. Then get some precision snips and start trimming off the overhanging plastic card. I find it easier to flip the base over so you can line the snips up with the edge of the base. Snips work better than scissors due to the fact that you can get a more precision cut even if you do have to do several smaller snips. This is a relatively simple method of making bases and after cutting out all the parts from the plastic card I was able to apply all of these to the bases in about 30 minutes. Now for the next layer. We're going to use our old friend slate. This slate was from a paving slab that was discarded and I took home and whenever I'm running low I just go take a hammer to it and bingo! Instant refill. So to any of the people out there that are paying for Wargaming Slate for their bases, just get a hammer and a slate paving slab and you'll save yourself a bunch of money. Now if the parts of the slate are too big, it's easily fixed. Firstly, try to break it with your hands and look feeble in the attempt as you fail. Then, try another way and redeem yourself. Then, find some old snips or something you don't mind wrecking and just start clipping the slate. Since it's brittle, it tends to fracture easily, so this should hopefully be enough for you to get some smaller pieces to work with. Then it's just a case of filling the more prominent gaps with these bits of slate using our old friend super glue again. Now we're going to use something a bit more specialised. This stuff is from AK Interactive Terrains and it's basically a very thick textured paint that to be fair is more of a paste rather than a paint. Now I have the concrete one here but it actually doesn't matter which one you use as we're going to paint over this later. Now I'm going to show you how I went wrong with this initially. Firstly I got an old haggard brush and I just scooped it and started smushing, that's right I used the word smushing, it into the base. This is not the ideal way as the brush is not the best for scooping up this paste and getting it onto the base. 
After going around and smushing, I like the word smushing, it into the base, rinse your brush off and start stippling the paste into the base. This allows you to blend it in nicely. Then sprinkle some of the tiny bits of slate on top and try to smoosh them in with a damp brush. A far better way of getting the texture paste onto the base is using these sculpting tools. They're pretty cheap and you can find them on Amazon for about a tenner. Then again with a damp brush, stipple onto the paste to blend it in. This stippling allows you to blend it but also leave textures behind due to the nature of the stippling action. And then leave it to dry. I'm going to use an airbrush for priming but this can easily be done with a rattle can and we're going to prime it black. I lean toward using Steinal Res Primer as it goes through the airbrush beautifully, however trying to get hold of it right now is tricky so whatever preference you have that will work as well. After that we're coming in with some Vallejo Stonewall Grey and I'm focusing it mainly on the stone floor areas but doing a light brush over the high areas to blend it slightly. Anyone else really enjoy watching things get coloured in with an airbrush? Then I did a highlight of scale colour white sands focusing again on the floor areas with just a briefest highlight over the rest of the areas. Now with all that airbrushing on the base, a lot of the details have been lost and we need to bring them back. Enter the secret black wash mix. I couldn't tell you exactly how I made it up, but I remember there being a distilled water, black ink, flow improver and matte medium in this mix. If you don't have access to any of these materials, no one will suffice. The downside is you need a fair bit of it so it becomes a little bit pricey. Also I know I should have put wash in a palette instead of a wet palette, but sometimes I'm just lazy. Now drench the model in black wash and set it aside to dry. Now we need to bring back the detail on those edges and we'll return to using our scale color white sands and we're going to do some dry brushing. Another side note, if you want some pretty decent brushes solely for dry brushing, get some makeup brushes. You can get around 10 for about the six pound mark in the UK and they work just as well, if not better in some instances than the Army Painter or Artis Opus brushes. Also, I'm using a texture palette here, but have a look at the video in the top right from MS Paints for how to make your own, which is a fair bit cheaper as well. Dry brush the white sands all over the base. I mean, there's no special technique here, just dry brush it. Then paint the rim of the base. So satisfying. And for completionist's sake, paint the flying stand and attach your model. If you batch assemble and paint these, you could easily have an entire army's worth done in a day. But if you just want the one, the longest period of time is going to be the drying time. After that, it's relatively quick and you can have a fully textured scenic base without having to pay the ludicrous amounts of money that you usually have to pay for a resin scenic base. And that's how you make urban city war zone bases. Nice and simple, nice and easy. You only need a few tools. You can maybe get an army's worth out of two of the sheets of the plastic card. Slate will become relatively cheap. If you can get a paving slab of slate, you will have slate for a good long while. I've had this paving slab for coming close to four years now and I've not even made a dent in it. So lesson learned, hammer, paving slab, instant slate for life. And that's it. Now this doesn't just need to be an urban war zone, you can change the colours up here. I've just gone for a dark gritty theme because of Night Lords, however you could easily change the colours up. So if you've liked this video, please hit the like, share and subscribe, all of that jazz, you know what to do. And 
hopefully I will see you all in the next video where we've got some fun things coming up. Until then everyone, be good, be safe, and I'll see you then. Bye bye.